Welcome to HP Tuners for Gen 1 Coyote Training Part 33. This training module we're going to be taking a look at how to dial in our ghost cam tuning on our Coyote engines. The ghost cam is going to allow us to dial in overlap and change our spark timing feedback and idle conditions so that we have a lopey type of idle so it sounds like the engine has a cam but we have stock cams installed. So we're going to go over some basic details with this so you can get started experimenting with your Coyote engine. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to set up a ghost cam tune on a Gen 1 Coyote engine. Now the ghost cam tune is going to allow us to dial in overlap at idle and change our spark timing feedback to be more aggressive to induce a loping type idle effect similar to what we would have with a larger camshaft that has high lift and high duration we'll find that we can accomplish the same kind of thing with our stock cams. Now, this is something that you may or may not want to do. This is definitely going to be more for a show type aspect. It does sound pretty cool, but it can create drivability problems and idle problems. So we have to be careful how we're implementing this. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks here, the, the least amount of things to change in your file to induce a ghost cam tune. And then you can experiment beyond that point. There's so many different ways that we could go after a ghost cam tune, um, but I'm going to be showing you essentially the, the most important things uh, that we can get the effect that we're after. I like to change the least amount of things in the calibration file, so I'm not essentially putting myself on a wild goose chase, trying to go and change a million things at one time that start to, can start to have all kinds of um, um, idle problems, stalling problems. So what we're going to look at here is to be able to get a nice lope and nice drivability and return back into idle without having any kind of stalling problems or other kinds of issues you probably commonly hear when people are talking about a ghost cam tune. So let's jump in and take a look at what we need to change. We're going to start off in our idle control, then we'll work, into, work our way into the VCT scheduling, and then into our spark timing. Then we'll test this, and we'll start to data log and take a look at some specific things that we need to pay attention to to determine what is going on within dialing in the ghost cam type of effect. Let's jump in here. I'm going to go in uh, to my engine tab, and then I'm going to move into the idle tab here, and then under general. Under general, we're going to find that we have our disable RPM error, and minimum VSS. Now, what we are trying to do here is put the idle control into dash pot. So there's different modes of idle control. There's preposition that's for starting. There's RPM control. That's your typical idle RPM control that's going on. And then we also have dash pot. When we're in dash pot, dash pot allows us to follow what we're commanding in the optimal stability table for VCT scheduling or emissions reduction for the VCT scheduling. If we're in RPM control, RPM control is going to ignore what's in the map point table, for example, at optimal stability when they're calling on that, let's say on a warmed up idle, it'll it'll bypass whatever we're calling on. It'll automatically put the cam pairing at zero, zero or the neutral position or the least amount of overlap. What we're trying to do is make sure that we are getting into dash pot and staying into dash pot in idle conditions. So in order to do that, we're going to have to go to the minimum VS VSS and set this to zero. This is also going to allow us by going in here to set this to zero. This is also going to allow us to turn off any kind of adaptive nature as soon as we come off idle. So as soon as we're starting to move a little bit, it'll ignore any kind of adaptive control. That way it'll um, just start to drive normal and we'll transition out and, uh, and we'll just be in the normal drive mode. So we're going to lower this to zero mile per hour. The disable RPM error here, we're going to raise this up to 100. What this is saying is the adaptive control, if we are stopped at zero mile per hour, will allow a 100 RPM window for it to apply itself. Now this is important because if we're taking a look at our idle, the spark feedback and our idle control, we want that to be pretty aggressive to create the loping effect. So we need overlap and we need our spark timing to essentially add and subtract very quickly to create a lope type effect. So we go ahead and achieve those kind of goals by changing this to 100 and to zero. Now that isn't gonna be the end all be all in terms of setting, but the zero we definitely have to have. The 100, you can experiment, you can keep it at stock at 50 RPM or 75 or 100 here, but typically I go with 100 to start off with. Now let's go in here to our RPM. We're gonna jump into the park neutral and drive for the RPM target. I'm gonna set this higher than my stock values when I'm trying to run a ghost cam tune. I like to set this to something like 900 for both the park neutral and drive. That way, when I'm going in and commanding the overlap to happen and the spark timing feedback to happen, it's usually pr more pronounced and will have more of a loping effect at the higher RPM. It also provides a little bit better stability in our idle control so that we're not getting into goofy stalling problems when we're deselling back into idle or even just at idle conditions. It's more predictable with the ghost cam tune. So you can experiment with the RPM, but I'm going to start off here at 900. 
Now in Airflow here, if we jump in, there's a dash pot airflow, enable airflow. I'm going to change this to something very low, such as one or two grams per second. What this is going to do is allow us to turn on the dash pot. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.